good morning this is um, psychology this is your last topic in attachment the influence of early attachment on childhood and adult relationships um, now this is something we've come across before the internal working model this was um, put forward by Bowlby um, as you're probably aware and before we go through this you might like to challenge yourself and think um, about can you remember all the five points in Bowlby's theory of attachment uh, using the ask me so you might want to pause the video now and see if you can list them that's quite a good revision activity right if you've done that well done and uh, now internal working model is what we're looking at today um, and it, I, hopefully you remember but let's just quickly recap the idea that your first um, attachment forms a pattern or a template for all your future relationships it teaches you how to act in relationships basically so if you have a secure attachment at first then um, you would be expected to have good relationships in the future that have fairly positive patterns of behavior um, on the whole whereas um, if you have uh, an insecure attachment to start with that could then lead to relationship behaviors being um, less positive for example there might be a, a um, there might be issues such as jealousy insecurity um, aggressive patterns of behavior and so on so um, that's the idea you might struggle to form relationships you might act inappropriately um, and so on yeah so that's the idea of the internal working model and as we go through each of the pieces of research that I'm about to outline briefly you need to have that clear in your head and we're going to weigh up each piece of research basically does it support this idea or does it contradict this idea so if you're not clear on this internal working model idea again take a pause go and do some reading about it uh, make some notes get it straight in your head before we carry on okay yep so we're going to go through the research now peer relationships in childhood this is the first one um, so this was a study by Kearns and Kearns found that attachment type uh, was then associated with the quality of peer friendships in childhood so those who were securely attached formed better quality attachments compared to those who were insecurely attached or better quality friendships in childhood compared to those who were insecurely attached so you can think yourself whether you think this supports or contradicts the internal working model again pause if you like and have a think about it but this study um, does support the internal working model because it's saying that that securely those children who were securely attached had better friendships than those who were insecurely attached so again it's saying that that forms a pattern um, or it kind of gives them a um, teaches them how to act in their friendships later on okay second study Myron Wilson and Smith so they used questionnaires to assess attachment and bullying within 7 to 11 year olds and here's what they found if the um, they had had a secure attachment they were less likely to be involved in bullying if they'd had an insecure avoidant attachment they were more likely to be victims and if they'd had an insecure resistant attachment they were most likely to be bullies so again you can pause and think about whether you think this supports or contradicts the internal working model if you like and it supports the internal working model because those who were secure are showing more positive relationships later those who had an insecure um, attachment of some sort were more likely to be involved in negative behavior patterns to do with bullying okay next one McCarthy 2010 so this is about um, this is where women who have um, experienced their these women's parents parented in a negative way so they've experienced negative parenting or at least they're reporting it and then they're comparing that to their relationships now and so half of them were saying they had problems now and the other half were saying they didn't so that was interesting because it's sort of 50 50 isn't it um, they'd um, uh, those, you'd expect them according to the internal working model you'd expect the, them if they'd had negative parenting to be showing insecure uh, or 
poor relationships now, wouldn't you? But only half of them are reporting problems in relationships now. Um, the other finding was that 28% of secure types did have good and satisfying adult relationships. Again, you'd expect that to be higher, wouldn't you, really? If they had a secure attachment type, you'd expect them to go on um, and have, uh, sorry, that should say 28% of insecure types. Uh, so if you're making notes on this, please uh, make sure you correct that in your notes. 28% of insecure types did have good and satisfying adult relationships. Um, so it's saying that actually we should, uh, it's saying that it's partly supportive, uh, isn't it? Because some of them have gone on, some of those who had insecure attachments have gone on to have uh, problems in their relationships. But actually it's saying that some people do go on it from an insecure attachment to develop positive adult relationships. So we use this study really in contradiction of the internal working model. Um, and McCarthy actually concluded that it's not the early experiences themselves that cause problems in later relationships, but it's more to do with the way that we process or think about our early experiences that may affect us. Okay, next one, Zimmerman. So um, the, uh, this study looked at attachment type at 12 to 18 months and it was checked again at the age of 16. So what they're looking at is have those who had a secure attachment at, at about a year old, do they have a positive relationship with their parents at the age of 16? Um, and they found that the answer was no, not necessarily. Um, and they were finding that other things were making a much bigger difference than the attachment type. So this is one that we use to contradict the internal working model. Because it's saying that other things have been found that affect it more than attachment type. Okay, next one. Hazan and Shaver. Now this is a, um, this is a really well-known um, study called the love quiz um, and uh, yes I'll send you I've got a copy of it somewhere so you can actually have a go at doing this and um, uh, carrying out your own uh, carrying it out on, your, out on yourself doing a bit of psychology on yourself and finding out something about yourself uh, but the study um, was basically it was in a newspaper they called it a love quiz and got people to respond to it and they asked about three things they asked about their current and most important relationship so for example if they're married that would be their spouse they asked about their general love experiences and also about their current attachment type so what they what they're going to do with this data what they did with the data they assessed the attachment type um, and then they um, they're kind of correlating that to the um, their relationships now to see if the two are linked together. So this was what they found, was that those who are secure are more likely to have the, the better romantic relationships and those who are assessed as avoidant tended to have issues such as jealousy and fearing intimacy. So this is a, a one to really strongly support the internal working model. Um, and then we've got another study by Baylor here. Internal working models affect a child's own ability to parent their, sorry that doesn't make sense, own ability to parent their own children. Um, so you might recognise this study because we came across it earlier in our topic. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember where it was. We actually looked at it, I think, when we looked at Bowlby's theory, um, where 99 mothers were assessed um, on the quality of their attachment to their own mother um, and what they were doing was they were looking to see if mothers who'd had a poor attachment to their own parents were more likely to have children with a poor attachment and they found that yes that was the case um, so yeah most women had the same classification of attachment both to their babies and their mothers so this one again strongly supports the internal working model saying that early relationship that early attachment rather affects our later relationships and forms a pattern and teaches us how to behave 
okay I think this is the last one Farley um, this was a meta-analysis where they'd reviewed all the studies or lots of the studies in this area um, and found that actually in some studies it, there was just a really really low correlation as low as 0 0.1 I've put you a picture of that so you can see that if you remember when we did correlations zero correlation means there's no link at all if we were looking for like a strong correlation we'd be looking at more like 0 0.7 0 0.8 ideally but it being as low as 0 0.1 correlation coefficient is uh, not yeah not exactly conclusive so there you are that's lots of evidence that we've talked about um, and in this particular area uh, you've got I've listed these here make sure you've made this clear in your notes and I would make some notes as well for each of them on why it supports the idea of the internal working model make sure you're really clear on that and ask me if you're not um, and then the other thing you need to be aware of is you can be asked separately about you could have one question that said explain the influence of early attachment on childhood relationships or you could have a question that says explain the influence of early attachment on adult relationships so you need to make sure that you've got those two kind of separated in your notes so ideally do some sort of table make sure you really choose a few that you're really confident you would be able to remember which they are um, I think the Myron Wilson and Smith is quite a good one for childhood because it's about bullying it's quite easy to remember that's about childhood isn't it whereas the adulthood ones these are quite good because the Hazan and Shaver the love quiz is a really big quiz you'll be able to find more information about that study online and read up if you want to um, and the Bailey one we've also used previously um, in the other so it, it's cropped up already so it's good um, to use studies when they, you can use them more than once isn't it so those those really are the ones I would go for um, and make sure that I've learnt which are which if I were you so that's the work on the internal working model um, let's have a, a just a quick look at a couple more evaluation points um, so just to be aware that the evidence is really mixed as you've seen some studies support the idea of an internal working model and some really don't um, many studies in this area have got problems with validity so for example when you've got self-report this actually is quite a sensitive topic isn't it like people for example may not want to report that that they've um, parented negatively so they may social desirability bias may come in into play and they might present themselves in a better light you know they may be a bit ashamed to admit that they're um, a bit jealous in their relationships or whatever so you, we can't rely on the validity of data if if an interview is being used um, or a questionnaire um, equally retrospective data collection that just means collecting data after the fact in this case we're often collecting data many many years later where people are saying oh this is what my early childhood was like uh, we can't really necessarily rely on people's memories uh, in that way um, another problem is that many studies uh, look at an association between the two things between secure attachment in childhood and positive adult relationships that doesn't show that one causes the other which is kind of what the theory says isn't it that the uh, a secure attachment causes a positive relationships later whereas if you think back to when we looked at correlations we talked about there might be a third hidden factor that's causing a change in both things and this is quite a nice example of that because um, you might have something like personality which might if someone has quite a warm sunny personality that might cause them to have a good attachment with their parents it might also cause them to have good relationships when they're older equally if you have someone who's got quite a stressy nervy sort of personality then they probably end up with an insecure attachment and equally they um, might have problems later on in their relationships so it, it might be something that's caused by personality the last point is that um, it's quite a deterministic theory. Determin determinism is just the idea that um, behaviour is determined or fixed or set by um, something and then we don't have free will to change it. Whereas, actually, So this theory is deterministic because it's saying that our early attachment 
kind of fixes what our behaviour pattern will be like. And you could argue that that's really exaggerating the influence of attachment. Um, I'm sure you can think of examples of people who had a really negative, horrible childhood, you may even know some, and who've then um, gone on to have really positive adult relationships. There are people, you know, you can take steps and, um, and stuff. And so there are people who don't aren't affected for their rest of the the rest of their lives by a negative attachment right so there you go that's your topic i will post um a uh, a piece of work for you on in fact no i'm not uh, this is for c group um i'm not going to post a piece of work for you on this because i know you're all very busy revising for your assessments but what i would like to see is a, a photograph of your notes on this once you've made some notes on this video thank you